What's up guys, welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So at this point, most of you guys probably know that the next Dokkan Fest unit on Global is going to be the STR transforming Kefla. And according to Team Dokkaner, her celebration is going to be absolutely jam-packed with tons of new events, lots of new units, as well as a bunch of new awakenings for existing units. So in today's video, I want to give you guys a quick preview of everything that we can expect to see to get you guys fully ready. All right, now before we jump into it, I do want to give a quick shout out to my friends over at Pain Shop on Twitter for hooking me up with some very generous prices on my Dragonstones. If you guys are looking to save yourselves a decent amount of money on your next Dragonstone purchase, specifically on the iOS side, then make sure to hit them up on Twitter, link in my description down below. Okay, so with all that said, let's uh just get it started. There's a lot of stuff to cover. It might be a bit of a longer video, so, as far as the JP celebration is concerned, this was actually a two-part campaign on JP. Although I don't think it's going to be two parts on Global, mainly because there's not a ton of time between the end of the anniversary and the beginning of the download celebration at the end of the month. So I do think it's going to be one big part. I mean, other reason actually I don't think there's going to be a part two is because the new unit for part two on JP already exists on Global. And that was the LR Ultra Instinct Goku, right? So yeah, for that reason, I do think it's going to be one part, but there's going to be a lot of stuff in this one part. So first things first, we have a login bonus, of course, standard for every celebration. We also have some special missions, and we should expect another Hercules Heart Pounding Gifts login bonus, which of course will give you more Dragonstones every single day on top of the standard login bonus, but it's also very RNG based, so some people will get one stone a day the entire time, some people might get three stones, seven stones, really depends on your luck, but uh, at the very least, you will probably get around uh, 20 stones at the minimum, right, if you get super unlucky and only get one stone a day. So that's the Hercules Heart Pounding Gifts, and then we have the Dokkan Festival Banner for the Kefla, as well as a new uh, Vados, that's going to be the secondary new units on the banner. There will be a category summon for, I believe the new category, which is called, what's it called again? Uh, let me see, hold on. Rapid growth, there we go. I mean, obviously when it comes to global, it might be a different name, but on JP it's called rapid growth. It's the new category that Kefla is gonna bring over with her. And uh, as far as category banners go, you guys know how I feel about them. So I would re recommend everybody to skip. Even with this count, it's just, not worth it, but it's your call. All right, so category banner, Elder Kai banner, Dragonstone sale, of course. And then there's the new Dokkan event for the Transforming Kefla, a new stage for the Universe 6 story event, a new stage for Infinite Dragon Ball history, although Dokkaner said that we're gonna get two new stages. So we'll take a look at that in a second. And uh, there's also gonna be some returning story events, of course some uh, token events that are available every single day. You guys will see why these two specifically will be available every day in a second. Uh, a new ultimate clash, which we are definitely due for because the one that's currently on will end soon. There's also going to be a new Extreme Z area for two free to play units. Um, explosive chain battle. So at this point for JP, it was actually uh, at the second boss, I think. So this was already out on JP for a while when this celebration happened, but this will be probably our first time getting this event. And uh, we'll take a look at that in a second as well on a separate page. Uh, new Extreme Z battle for Rosé, but obviously we already have Rosé, so we may or may not be getting another Extreme Z battle. Actually, no, we should be getting an Extreme Z battle either way, but I don't, I don't know if it's going to be like a new Dokkan Fest Extreme Z battle. And uh, also the Fizz exclusive banner should make a return along with the Dokkan Awakenings for the Fizz supports. This Gohan as well as this uh, Boo right there. And what else? Some more story of events returning. And there's also the part 2 stuff which like I said we're probably not going to get a second part but there is something from part 2 that we should definitely be getting with the celebration. That of course is the Extreme Z battle along with the Extreme Z Awakenings for the Fizz Kale as well as the AGL Khalifla, so we'll take a look at that in a second as well. And that's pretty much all there was for part two, honestly, so it wasn't a very big part to the celebration either way, and uh, it just really doesn't make sense for us to have two parts. It could still be a two-parter, right? But 
I feel like one part makes the most sense. Anyways, let's move over to the specific pages now for all this stuff. And uh, the first thing I want to take a look at, not this, but this one right here. This is the Kefla banner that was on JP. And I do expect the global banner to be very similar, if not exactly the same. There might be one or two units swapped out, but these days they haven't really been doing that. So it's very likely we'll get the exact same banner. And as far as the featured units go, of course, we have the new Kefla. We have the new Bados. And the rest of these guys are kind of, uh, I mean, they're not bad. Like 13 is actually still very good, but people aren't like that hype for him, I know, because he's just not a very popular character overall. But 13 is good. Obviously, 17 is still good, but super. Um, I mean, he's been featured a million times at this point and fairly old at this point. AGL Turles, who of course is still an amazing support unit. Uh, Goku Black can still be a good tank and he's just cool because he transforms the Rosé. But uh, yeah, this featured pool doesn't really inspire me too much. I'll be, I'll be straight up with you and I would honestly recommend most people to consider skipping because, I mean, as much as Kefla is amazing, which you'll see, uh, at the end of this video once we go over her details but she's she's absolutely fantastic she's an amazing amazing unit but her banner is not the greatest bottles is good too but her banner once again is just not the greatest moving on though let's take a quick look at the animations for the bottles and the kefla before we move on because obviously those are very important so uh let me just turn up the volume a bit here and i'm gonna shut up for a second you guys enjoy Yeah, so needless to say, this uh, this Kefla has some really, really clean animations, guys. Great active skill, um, great transformations, attacks are amazing too. Bottles is not as nice, but it's fine because she has the secondary unit. But yeah, this Kefla has some very, very good animations. That's a big part of why I really want her, aside from the fact that she's just um, a really powerful unit. She has some awesome animations and at this point in my Dokkan career, if you will, um, I summon for units a lot more for their animations over their details. Obviously, it's a mix of both, right? But like, um, animations to me, I feel like are actually more important these days than actual performance. Although that could change if you get more difficult events and if I start struggling on some stuff, but right now, like, everything's kind of chill, right? So, I don't care as much about details compared to animations, and her animations are top tier, no question, no question. Okay, so there's the Kefla, let's move on to the Extreme Z battle event for the Fizz, Kale, as well as the AGL Khalifla. The weakness here is representatives, representatives, of, of, man, I can't talk right now, representatives of Universe 7, and uh, of course along the way we're getting medals for both Khalifla and Kale, we're starting off by fighting Khalifla, and then eventually we switch over to Kale. And then after stage 20, we fight both Khalifla and Kale. And uh, of course, all the way up to level 30, we're getting Dragon Stones, we're getting more medals, we're getting some orbs, Fizz, as well as AGL, and uh, some Kai's too. So once everything's said and done, we're looking at a grand total of 30 Dragon Stones, 5 Grand Kai's of each type, 
bunch of orbs for both types, as well as the Awakening Medals for both Kale and Khalifla. So that's the Extreme uh, Z Battle event right there. And as far as their Extreme Z Awakened details, let's quickly go over them. So for Khalifla, her leader skill is going to be all types, Q plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 80%. Her super attack, Supreme Damage, raises defense by 60% for 3 turns. Passive is attack and defense plus, or sorry, attack plus 120%, defense plus 60%. High chance of evading enemies' attack, including super attack, or medium chance of evading enemy super attack and countering with tremendous power. Attacks effective against all types when there is an ally whose name includes Kale attacking in the same turn. And of course our links and categories stay the same as before. So extremely good, no pun intended, but extremely good Extreme Z Awakening for the Khalifla. And same thing with the Kale. So her super attack causes immense damage, greatly lowers defense. Oh, leader skill is Fizz types, Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 100%. Passive is attack plus 160%, launches an additional attack which has a great chance of becoming a super attack, reduces damage received by 60% for 6 turns from start of turn, and then reduces damage received by 60% with 6 or more Fizz Key Spheres obtained starting from the 7th turn from the start of battle. So for the first 6 turns she gets 60% damage reduction guaranteed, and then after that she can still get it, it just takes some more orbs to uh, you know activate it. And uh, yeah, 160% attack, uh, additional attack guaranteed with a, what, 70% chance of becoming a super attack. And uh, she, got, she gets immense damage, she greatly lowers defense. Um, just a really good EZA all over. While I feel like Kale is a little bit more impressive, I think Khalifla looks really good too. So I'm excited for both of them for sure. After that, we can expect some more Doken Awakenings for the summonable tech-based Khalifla the STR base Kale, as well as the free to play Super Saiyan Khalifla and free to play Super Saiyan Kale. So why don't we start here with the Khalifla first. Her leader skill is going to be Universe 6 or Peppy Gals category key plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 120%. Super attack raises attack and defense, which of course can be stacked infinitely, causes supreme damage and lowers defense. Passive is attack and defense plus 80%. Chance of evading enemies attack including super attack plus 8% per universe 6 or peppy gals category ally on the team. Evades enemies attack including super attack when there is a universe survival saga or pure saiyans category enemy. And launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack when there is an ally whose name includes Kale attacking in the same turn. Links are saiyan lineage, saiyan warrior race, battlefield diva, prodigies, warriors of universe 6, Tournament of Power and Fierce Battle. And categories are Peppy Gals, Universe Survival Saga, Pure Saiyans, Universe 6, and Rapid Growth. So that is the Tech Khalifla. Really, really good. Now for the Kale, Pure Saiyans or Peppy Gals, category key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 120%. Super attack, once again, raises attack and defense, supreme damage, and lowers enemies' defense. Passive is attack and defense plus 80%, attack and defense plus 10%. Her Pure Saiyans or Peppy Gals category ally on the team launches an additional super attack when there is a Universe Survival Saga or Pure Saiyans category enemy and guard activated against all attacks when there's an ally whose name includes Khalifla attacking in the same turn. Links Saiyan Lineage, Saiyan Warrior Race, Battlefield Diva, Solid Support, Warriors of Universe 6, Tournament of Power, and Fierce Battle and categories are Peppy Gals, Universe Survival Saga, Pure Saiyans, Universe 6, and rapid growth. So these two girls are both absolutely amazing, especially for those longer events like LGE or Infinite Dragon Ball History and so on and so forth, just because, of course, stacking attack and defense is super, super clutch. But on top of that, they do a lot of other stuff too, man. So uh, two awesome awakenings. Both these girls are rainbowed for me. So I'm excited to do some gameplay, to do some showcases for you guys. So stay tuned for that. And moving on to the free to play Khalifla now. She uh, gets STR types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 50% for a new leader skill. Uh, super attack is supreme damage, raises defense by 30% for one turn. Passive is attack and defense plus 20% up to 80%. And chance of evading enemies attack including super attack plus 15% up to 60%. Her universe survival saga category ally on the team. Plus an additional attack plus 50%. When there's an ally whose name includes Kale on the team, 
and launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack when there's an ally whose name includes Kale attacking in the same turn. And then her links are Super Saiyan, Battlefield Diva, Prodigies, Warriors of Universe 6, Prepare for Battle, Tournament of Power, and Shattering the Limit. In categories, Universe Survival Saga, Peppy Gals, Pure Saiyans, Full Power, Universe 6, Super Saiyan 2, and Rapid Growth. And then we have the Super Saiyan Kale here. Int types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 50%, Supreme Damage, lowers defense, and then passive is Universe Survival Saga, category allies key plus 2, HP, or sorry, attack and defense plus 30%, defense plus 50%, when there's an ally whose name includes Khalifla on the team, and all allies key plus 1, and attack and defense plus 10%, when there is an ally whose name includes Khalifla attacking in the same turn. So, um, with a Khalifla attacking on that rotation, she actually gives key plus 3, and attack and defense plus 40%, which is pretty crazy for a support. And then links are Super Saiyan, Battlefield Diva, Solid Support, Warriors of Universe, of Universe 6, Prepare for Battle, Tournament of Power, and Shattering the Limit. And categories are Universe Survival Saga, Peppy Gals, Pure Saiyans, Full Power, Universe 6, Super Saiyan 2, and Rapid Growth. And that about does it for the Awakenings, both Extreme Z Awakening and Dokkan Awakenings for all of the Kale and Khaliflas. And now let's move on to the new stages for Infinite Dragon Ball History. Um, like I said, according to Team Dokener, we should be getting two, and the only two stages that we're missing are the Youth Category 1, or the Youth Themed 1, as well as the Universe 6 Themed 1. So let's start here with the Youth 1 first. The enemy for, or the enemies for this stage are gonna be Goku and Bulma, and then Kid Chi Chi, and then Krillin, and then Tzu. And then uh, Kid Gohan, Trunks, and Goten, and then Kid Pan, and finally Kid Boob as well. So that's the youth stage right there, and as far as missions go, we of course get some stones for clearing each of the phases, and then four stones for clearing all the phases, and then two extra stones for having three or more youth category characters, and then two more for three or more world tournament category characters, and finally one stone for clearing all the missions plus an Elder Kai. And then let's move on to the Universe 6 stage. So these are the enemies for Universe 6 here. We got Botamo, we got uh, Magetta, Frost, Kaba, Kale, Khalifla, Saono, and Perina, as well as Hit as the final boss. And same thing with the missions here. We get some stones for each of the phases, four stones for clearing all the phases, and then two stones for three Universe Survival Saga or more characters, and two stones for three reps of Universe 7. Or more characters on your team, one stone plus a Kai for clearing all the stages, or sorry, all the missions. So, those are the two new Infinite Dragon Ball History stages we can expect from this campaign. Next up, we have the Fizz type banner along with the Dokkan Awakenings for the support Gohan and this Super Boo. And as far as the featured pool goes, it's most likely going to look something like this. And there's also going to be all of the non Dokkan Fest Fizz LRs in the unfeatured pool. The LR androids should be here as well, but uh, overall, I'll be honest, man, it's not the most inspiring pool as far as, you know, LRs go. And I do recommend most people to hold on to their stones and skip this banner unless you really want one of these Fizz LRs or one of the supports, all right? I mean, a couple multis couldn't hurt, but we do have, of course, the download celebration down the line, so... If you can skip it, I would probably say to skip it. Now let's move on to the supports themselves. So here's the Super Boo, and his Token Awakening has a leader skill for Extreme Fizz types, key plus 4. HP, attack, and defense plus 120%. Super attack is uh, Supreme Damage and recovers 18% HP. Passive is Fizz types, key plus 3, plus an additional attack and defense plus 50%. For extreme fizz types, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, fizz excluded, to fizz key spheres, and then attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained. So 18% healing on his super every single time is really crazy. That is a lot of healing, and of course, uh, this does make him the best fizz or extreme fizz support in the game, uh, along with uh, his own ability to do some damage and some tanking as well. So really good awakening just like all of the other uh, type supports that we've had so far. And also for the Gohan here, his token awakening looks like this. And the leader skill will be extreme fizz, or sorry, super fizz type key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 120%, super attack raises attack 
and causes supreme damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. Passive is Fizz types key plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense plus 50%. For Super Fizz types, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, Fizz excluded, to Fizz key spheres and then attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained. So that is the awakening for the support Gohan. And now let's move on to another new event, the Grand Priest event. And I forgot to actually mention it in the beginning of the video, but we should also be getting this for the Kefla campaign. And basically, when you clear this first stage here, we get some special tickets that can be exchanged in the Baba Shop for these treasure chest items, and each treasure chest contains special skill orbs that are exclusive to members of Team Bardock. And uh, by the way, you can only take on this event, at least the first stage here, with members of the free-to-play Team Bardock, and each member has their own special skill orbs. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this, there's only one level at the moment, it's called Team Bardock's Trial, but I assume that in the future, we will get more stages for maybe other free-to-play teams, or just other categories in general. Uh, there's definitely gonna be one, I mean there's gotta be one for like the free-to-play Inu Force, right? And uh, like I said, maybe other categories in the future. But for now, we should only be getting this Team Bardock stage, and that is the Grand Priest event. And after that, we have another new event that a lot of people have been waiting for for quite some time. And this one is called Explosive Chain Battle. Now there's a lot to get to here, and I'm not gonna go through everything because I feel like this event deserves a video of its own, but in today's video, I'm just gonna quickly talk about, you know, the basics. And essentially, it's like a co-op nuking event. It's not quite true co-op, but it's the closest thing we've had in this game so far. And it says here, Explosive Chain Battle is a new battle mode that uses the power of friends to reach a high score and aim for the highest ranking. So yeah, you're bringing a team of your own units as well as a team of your friends units and uh, you're basically trying to do as much damage to the boss as possible and the higher your damage output the higher your ranking and the higher your ranking the better your rewards for this event so it goes in tiers like this so top one percent is what you're aiming for but there's also tiers for you know 76 to 100 4 to 6 8 to 10 and so on and so forth and as far as the rewards go they're actually really good so for top one percent you're getting a ton of these special items that can be exchanged in the Baba Shop for skill orbs, as well as a ton of Kai's, some stickers, a bunch of training items, a bunch of orbs, all that good stuff. And even for these lower tiers, like you're still getting a sticker if you're in the top 10%, you're still getting a lot of orbs and some Kai's. So uh, yeah, overall, as far as rewards go, a really good event. It doesn't seem like it's the most exciting. It's not that interactive overall, but I'm definitely still excited for it to finally come out, you know? So that is Explosive Chain Battle. And then next up, we have another new mode that's called Extreme Super Battle Road. And this is basically like a much more difficult version of the mono type Super Battle Road stages we currently have. So as you can see, um, you're going to be fighting one type of enemy, so this one's versus Extreme AGL, and you can only bring Super Tech units on your team. If you're facing the Extreme Tech stage, then you can only bring Super Int units. If you're facing the Extreme Int stage, you can only bring Super Fizz. If you're facing, you know, Super Int, you can only bring Extreme Fizz, and so on and so forth. I'm sure you guys get the point, but uh, like I said, it's just a harder version of the mono stages we currently have, and I definitely expect a good amount of challenge. A lot of people probably will struggle with this, at least for a while, but uh, it's not a bad thing because I've definitely been looking forward to more difficult content in this game, and this should satisfy that need for a while. So that's Extreme Super Battle Road, and we also get these special like jewel or crystal items that can be exchanged in the Baba Shop for some stickers, or some character slots, stamina, Elder Kai's, or Hercule statues. And uh, as far as the rewards go, we can also get the Extreme Z Awakening medals for the original Super Battle Road LR, the Fizz Kid Gohan. So uh, that's also pretty dope, but you have to actually complete all of the stages. So a lot of people are going to probably have a hard time getting, you know, this Kid Gohan Extreme Z Awakening at least all the way for a while. So um, yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, yeah, that is Extreme Super Battle Road. I think I will be making a separate video for this event as well, just going a little bit more in depth and giving you guys some more details, but this video is getting so long that we'll have to save that for another time. Okay, so 
Now let's move on to the new stage for the Universe 6 story event. And it's basically just a uh, Whis training style stage where you can complete it once a day and you get special skill orbs that are exclusive to Universe 6 units. And uh, that's pretty much it. And we also have the Extreme Z area for the free to play Int Final Form Frieza and also AGL Cooler. And uh, this Frieza actually Dokkan Awakens from the Frieza that drops on the full power Frieza Dokkan event. And this cooler is available in the Baba Shop for Incredible Gems. So that is the event right there to Dokkan Awaken them, or sorry, Extreme Z Awaken them. And you can only bring a specific pool of units, which is standard for these events. So those are the units you can bring. And uh, aside from that, it's just your standard Extreme Z you know, area events, right? Nothing else too special. And lastly, we're gonna go over the details here for the transforming Kefla as well as the new Bados for anybody that hasn't seen my previous videos where I, you know, covered them. But if you guys already did, you already know what they do, then feel free to click off the video now. Thank you for watching. But for anybody that is still not aware, then uh, let's get into it. Okay, so for Kefla, her leader skill is Universe 6 Category Q plus 3. HP attack and defense plus 170% or rapid growth Q plus 3 HP attack and defense plus 150% her super attack raises attack causes immense damage and lowers defense her passive is defense plus 100% attack plus 100% when performing a super attack plus an additional attack plus 50% and high chance of evading enemies attack including super attack with 6 or more key spheres obtained transform when conditions are met and she transforms starting from the third turn from the start of battle her links are saiyan warrior race battlefield diva fuse fighter power bestowed by god warriors of universe 6 tournament of power as well as fierce battle and her categories are peppy gals universe survival saga patara full power transformation boost universe 6 super saiyans super saiyan 2 final trump card as well as rapid growth so that is the base kefla for you and once she transforms into Super Saiyan Kefla, her super attack raises attack, causes immense damage, and greatly lowers defense. Her passive is defense plus 150%, attack plus 150% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 50%, and high chance of evading enemies attack, including super attack, with 6 or more key spheres obtained. Transform when conditions are met. And she'll transform upon entering the next attacking turn, with 60% or more HP, and she also gets the Super Saiyan Link. So once she transforms into Super Saiyan 2 Kefla, her super attack raises attack, causes immense damage, and massively lowers enemy defense. Her passive is Q plus 2, defense plus 160%, attack plus 160% when performing a super attack, high chance of evading enemies attack including super attacks, and launches an additional super attack with six or more key spheres obtained. She also has an active skill, which you guys saw in the animations earlier, which changes phase key spheres to STR key spheres, attacks effective against all types for one turn, and can be activated when there is a pure Saiyans or universe survival saga category enemy once only. So those are all the details for all three stages of Kefla. Like I said, she is a absolutely phenomenal unit, man. She is very, very powerful, does a lot of damage, um, has some really good defense and uh, has some great animations too as you guys saw so definitely a unit that I want definitely a unit that I'm gonna go for now finally let's move on to the Vados here and her leader skill is universe 6 category Q plus 3 HP attack and defense plus 120 percent super attack supreme damage lowers attack and seals super attack her passive is attack and defense plus 60 percent high chance of evading enemies attack including super attack which is 50 percent she also gives universe 6 realm of gods siblings bond or bond of master and disciple category allies attack and defense plus 20 percent randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to rainbow key spheres when there is another universe 6 category ally attacking in the same turn so she is actually really insane and on paper, she doesn't seem that crazy because you're like, okay, she's a decent support unit. She gets, you know, high chance to dodge, 60% attack and defense, but like nothing too crazy. But the thing about her that is absolutely insane is that this support passive right here actually stacks for units that are in more than one of these categories. So Vados herself, for example, is in Realm of Gods, Universe 6, Siblings Bond, and Bond of Master and Disciple. So she actually gets this 
four times for a grand total of 80%. Attack and defense, same thing with Beerus is out there, who are in Realm of God, Siblings Bond, and Bond of Master and Disciple. That's 60% attack and defense support. And for other guys like Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, and so on and so forth, they're all getting this multiple times. So that's why she is such an insane support, because she can give up to attack and defense plus 80% on her passive, which is, you know, in the right situation, the highest boost any support units can provide in this game right now, right? So, uh, yeah, this Vados is really good. Um, she's good on her own. She's a great, great support unit, and uh, I really hope I pull her. So there you go, guys. That is everything I wanted to talk about in this video. We covered Vados. We covered Kefla. We talked about all of the new events that we're going to be getting, and uh, some Awakening, some new units, all that good stuff, and that pretty much does it for the upcoming Kefla celebration, Kefla campaign on Global. Now obviously none of this stuff is 100% because they could make some changes to the Global campaign, but most of the stuff that we talked about in this video should definitely be there. Alright, so that's it guys. I know it's a bit of a longer video, much longer than I even thought it would be. But uh, hopefully it was worth it. Hopefully you guys learned something today. And that's all I got to say. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.